Continuing on with the repair here, I'm still waiting for parts and I decided to look through the rest of the components that I was able to check here. Uh, still waiting again for parts on to fix the driver board for the uh, input circuitry. Uh, the tuner transistors were shot, I ordered those. Actually, I ordered all four of them here. Uh, these, this one here and this one on the top and then this one on the corner here uh, actually tested out fine. Uh, these are the four main driver transistors for the input drive circuitry. And then I also ordered the drive IC, which is located right here, and then the hex inverter chip, which uh, works in conjunction with this chip. So moving along here, I started on this side, and this is uh, where this main board goes. And looking at the trace, this is actually the output stage drive circuitry that's located on here. It's got the three drive chips up here, and these uh, beige or white colored uh, components here are opto optocouplers. And they're basically meant to send signals back to this board, which controls the CAT45 communications when you have the remote set up. Um, and see if I can focus in a little bit on it. I know I've showed you guys a picture of it already, but uh, it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. I see a couple uh, capacitors, optocouplers, obviously drive ICs, uh, some surface mount resistors and capacitors, diodes, things of that nature. Nothing really seems to be burned here, and all the trace that uh, that's associated with this board is meant to work with the output transistors. So I don't see anything wrong with this. Moving across the board here, you know, checking all the diodes, those are simple uh, 1N4007s. Uh, those tested fine. Uh, capacitors uh, looked fine. Resistors don't usually... Uh, fail unless they look burned, but uh, checked everything there. Now there's quite a few transistors here. Now uh, basically they act as uh, you can set your meter to diode, see if uh, any of the leads are shorted. This one tested fine, diodes are fine. Have some more optocouplers, some up here as well. And what I noticed here, uh, so you got some more transistors, Q2 wound up shorting out and this Q2 is tied directly to the input drive circuitry. So not only did these uh, transistors fail on the board, but Q2 also wound up failing as well. And that can be easily replaced, which I already have the part for. It's an SS8550, and that's the burnt transistor. So I'm gonna replace that, and it's a good thing I checked because I probably would have never even noticed it if I didn't go around and go through this entire uh, circuit board with a fine tooth comb. Some of the other component connectors, you know, for those that are interested, P1 is your line for the AC, and then P2 is your neutral. Another thing to mention with this particular inverter topology is that it does not have a live neutral on the plug, which I have to pull it out of the box here, but well, I'll show you, I'll show you in the, in the, later on in the in the video that the neutral and the bond are internally jumpered together. So this is a neutral bonded uh, gener. Oh, I'm thinking of generators, but no, it's a neutral bonded uh, inverter. So that means you could uh, run this to a house panel if you wanted to. And as far as the controlling of the cooling fans, which go to the back here. It's actually uh, temperature controlled. It's controlled by Q8. Uh, the fans would connect here, but I have them uh, temporarily desoldered off here. And what it uses, it uses a, a little thermal couple here that's right on the end. And it's part of uh, the this circuit right here. So once the, and this actually sits in between the heat sink where the uh, FETs go. So at a certain temperature, this uh, temperature piece starts conducting and it activates the gate of this uh, transistor to activate the fans. I'm um, assuming that as the temperature rises that the speed of the fans uh, will get uh, faster. So that's uh, pretty much a quick update where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next portion here through the magic of editing once I do get my parts in. Again, I think that the output uh, transistors and the output stage is working as it should. It looks to be just damage on the input transistors and the drive board there. Hopefully, um, now that I found that this uh, U2, oh, I'm sorry, Q2 was uh, damaged, that I did a test on the FETs here and saw that I'm getting about seven 
mega ohms, 7 million ohms. So that's actually really good. I was getting about a dead short before, and now measuring in between the uh, DC side, I am no longer getting a, a direct short. It's more like around uh, 250 kilo ohms, which is what I would expect. And I would imagine that it'll probably be a little bit higher um, once I put everything back together. All right. Here's about as good of a close-up as I can get of this uh, little bo chip board here. Uh, Q1 and Q4 I was able to remove with my uh, surface mount component tools. Very easy. And as you can tell, the one on top, Q1, did not survive. Uh, the bottom one did survive a little bit better than the, than the other one. But I can't really seem to focus in on it anymore. But that is basically the uh, driver board here. The... Q2 and Q3 tested fine, uh, Q6, Q7, and then Q5 on the top all tested fine as well. So I'm just going to leave those. The diodes tested fine, capacitor tested fine, even these little, uh, it's like C4, like right where my finger is here. Those are really tiny capacitors. Um, I was able to test them in circuit. Nothing seems to be dead shorted, so I'm going to take that as a good sign. Flipping it over, this is where it gets a little tricky but uh, right here where the beeper is right below it this chip is actually the drive IC that operates the uh, four transistors right here to drive the uh, input FETs and then this is the hex inverter I'm um, sorry not, not that's not a hex inverter I think that's an op amp a four channel op amplifier there an LM 324 L to be exact and that when I tested, what I did was I tested the pins. Now the little notch that you see is pin one, and I tested for resi uh, continuity and resistance, and nothing showing a dead short on either of these chips. So I think I might have dodged a bullet here. Uh, it looks like it was just these drive uh, uh, transistors that wound up blowing. And as I mentioned in, in earlier in the video, that uh, one of the uh, pre-driver transistors that was on the main circuit board itself uh, was testing shorted so that might actually contribute to the reason why the input stage was shorting out and getting the FETs really hot because that drive I see was pulling that the set of FETs that pulls it from one side to the other basically what this uh, drive I see is doing it's taking two FETs uh, on the side here and actually let me show you the, on the board here to give you a better idea. Okay, just for illustrative purposes, basically the drive circuitry that's over here, uh, it takes uh, Q2 and I believe Q6 and it's moving, uh, it's pulling each one of these transistors to ground at about 50 kilohertz or so. And as a result, uh, let's say these bank of FETs right here, like these two and these two, for example, and I'm again, I'm not sure on how it, how it exactly works. I believe it's more uh, these four and these four, and they fire back and forth uh, based on the transistors here. They fire back and forth, pulling each of the center center tap of the um, primary uh, to ground 50 kilohertz a second here. And reviewing Neural Nars video here, uh, he was right. The secondary uh, that goes to these uh, output caps are wired in series to boost the voltage and the primary stages are wired in parallel so I think that's if my understanding is correctly the drive circuitry fires these FETs then back and then these FETs back and forth back and forth back and forth and becomes an alternating current so the transformer can use it to boost the voltage so that's what I learned from you Neuralnar kudos to you <laughs> Okay guys, here's the final leg of the video, and I have good news, and then I have bad news. The good news is that I found out why the battery side, the DC side, was pulling so much current when you, as, when you immediately connected the battery to it. Turns out that uh, Q2 right here was a dead short, and that ties uh, half of these uh, input FETs to ground, and that's what was causing those input FETs to get really hot and uh, cause it, my uh, circuit breaker here to trip. Now, I was able to replace it, and once I did, 
I reinstalled the input FETs and connected the battery. No more uh, dead short. In fact, it pulls less than half an amp with the power switch off. Now, the bad news about this, and I really feel terrible about it because when you spend so much time on a project like this, you know, you really don't want to give up on it. But what happened was that I did change, as I had mentioned on the drive circuitry board here, the input drive circuitry, changed Q1 and Q4, the two transistors that were shot, and uh, connected the battery to it. And I immediately got the magic smoke coming out and right now there's no battery connected to it but uh, I'll connect it to a battery in a second to show you what happened so those two transistors immediately shorted out I then took the drive circuitry off and I apologize again I haven't been able to uh, video record this it is kinda cumbersome to uh, uh, do video here but anyways the two transistors were shot I then took it took this board back out uh, re I had bought uh, doubles for each of them, so I did replace it with uh, the two working ones, two new transistors, and then I went and also changed out the drive IC. Now the drive IC, don't uh, don't judge me on it, but uh, I wasn't able to make a clean uh, a clean uh, It wasn't really the cleanest uh, removal of the original one as I had hoped. That copper wire that you see, I broke one of the traces. And that was really bunch. That was really it. But I was able to uh, make sure that all the connectors were not shorted or any bridges were made with the solder, and it worked. Uh, you know, and it worked well with my uh, um, with my multimeter. Plugged it in again, and again the same thing happened. the The two transistors smoked, and that's where I'm at right now. It seems that there must be something else on that drive board that is uh, shorted out here and unfortunately I really don't want to go and uh, dig into it anymore I do have the parts for it but uh, I don't know what else I'm going to be able to change out I've checked everything else uh, inside this and there is absolutely nothing wrong nothing shorted uh, that I can see so really the problem lies on this drive circuitry board I did try and call Samlex uh, America, which they're actually located in uh, British uh, Columbia, Canada. So I was able to call them, and it's right around 10 o'clock at night. And uh, I told them what I was looking for if I would just be able to replace this uh, board here. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to get an answer because it is the weekend, and I won't know until Monday morning or something or sometime on that day if I would be able to get this part. Now. If all right, so here's what happens when you connect the battery to it. Right now, I'm gonna have to zero out my meter. Zero. So here's the connector. Probably just gonna be a tiny spark. Now the power switch is off, and we're pretty much drawing no amperage now. And it's again, it's a little 12 volt battery, and I got a 10 to amp circuit breaker. Now this is the remote. It is going to, if I turn this on, unfortunately I'm getting the yellow and green lights on. And when I connect the CAT45, and I'm not getting any output power out, if I connect the CAT45, this is what I'm getting. This is again where I, I, this is probably the farthest I've gotten with this inverter so far. So if you were to hold it on, and I apologize for the uh, terrible sound, it says input fault. So obviously the drive circuitry is not working the way it should, and Kind of disappointed about it. So I'm waiting to hear back from Sam Lex on Monday morning if I can get that part and if it's not too crazy expensive. Uh, depending on what the owner of this inverter wants to do, I will uh, make an attempt at changing it out. But, uh, you know, when you reach a point where you just spend so much time on it, I don't know. So this is a to be continued, guys. See you soon.